Now this blocking stage is very important and it, it makes everything simple. Instead of getting involved with detail at this point, we're looking at the big shapes, the big patterns, and the underpainting. Now the underpainting is, is so important. And I have chosen these purples because they are a beautiful uh, background for the greens. The, the sap greens, the, the other greens that what I'll be putting on top, will eventually pick up some of these beautiful reds and purples and, and add some nice grays to it. And you'll see the effects later on. <clears throat> right now we're looking at the big shapes. I'm referring to my paintings. And I'm trying to get these big shapes blocked in here. These are the shadows, the cast shadows. The sun's coming from this direction. Get some beautiful backlighting on these delphiniums. So see what we're getting now are these, obviously the big shapes are working. So what I have to do and what you have to do at this point is to start to refine those delphiniums. Pick up a slightly smaller brush and start working in these areas in here. So let's start looking at the detail of the delphiniums. Not so much the detail, I shouldn't say the detail, as the, the character of the delphiniums, the shape of them. They are quite unique. And as I look at them, I see this very nice shape. They're quite unique. One of the things I like about the water-soluble paint is the fact that we can actually take pigment off at this point and refine some of the the more subtle details of the of the subject. In this case it's these flowers. You can remove the pigment very easily at this point with a bit of moisture. So we're looking at the, uh, the values, the shapes, and later on, as the painting develops, we'll be looking for another element, temperature, color temperature, very important, which makes the painting very interesting as well. Now, I think at this point I'm going to start working on the, the character of the delphiniums, the blues, the pinks. So I'm going to add a little bit of that opaque to the existing transparent wash. And I'm going to go to a uh, smaller brush, not too small, my favorite little brush, it's, it's a number uh, eight synthetic hair. And I'm going to start mixing a bit of white, very little water because you don't want to dilute the pigment too much. We'll go with that rose, permanent rose color. And we'll start putting in some of the massing of, the, of these flowers here. Right now, let's start bringing up the values a little bit. Something more interesting. Blue, heavier pigment. I started applying the pigment a little heavier at this point. That's pretty good for the middle value. Now, because these are backlit, there's a wonderful highlight to the side of the painting that you'll see uh, as we get into the final stages of it. So, let's start with the pinks now. We're going to go back to the other delphiniums. Start off with the 
These, I think we need to go a little bit lighter. They're almost a white. So I've decided to change that value from the, the middle value we have here to a, a, a closer to the light end of the, of the value scale. More like this. You'll see what happens when I start putting this on. Now there's a nice rhythm to these, these flowers that I liked as well. I don't want to lose that. When I'm looking off camera, I'm looking at my, my reference here, the painting, the original painting that I did, or one of them. That particular one that I'm referring to is a water, is an acrylic painting. The one to my, off to my left here is the water soluble oil painting. Now, and in the background, this is very important. We want to retain the, uh, the values, the dark values, which are really making the paint, the uh, delphiniums so strong and get that backlighting effect. So I'm going to start putting in what, what one of my favorite colors, sap green, permanent. Uh, every manufacturer, I believe, has it in their palette. And what will happen here is it's a very dark green. Once you mix it with the uh, almost the complementary colors underneath, you get some beautiful warm greens happening. Um, with acrylic, of course, this would have been dry already and you wouldn't have the ability to mix those two colors together. So what I'm going to do is to continue on mixing the green with that underpainting. allowing these beautiful colors to happen. Let's remember these are not dry yet. I don't want to be picking up too much of that uh, opaque color in here. Be a little careful how I go around that edge. But some wonderful things happen when you let the brush do the work for you. This is my magic brush by the way. It does all the work for me. All I have to do is to hang on to it. This negative shape in here is very important. I noticed it on the original painting and I don't want to lose it. I think it's a very important part of this painting. It separates these two elements. Now, as I said earlier, you wonder why I put those colors in to the, into the underpainting. And now you can see when I add the greens to it, it adds an element of interest to the green. And instead of a, a dull green, the green now has a certain warmth to it and an interest. And it's really a beautiful way to paint greens is with those purples in behind them. 